today on Disease Central, Ulnar Collateral Ligament Injury. In this video, you'll learn about anatomy of the elbow, injury and causes, symptoms, risk factors, diagnosis, treatment plans, and complications. To start, this is the elbow joint. It is made up of three bones, the humerus in the upper arm, and the radius and ulna making up the two bones in the forearm. The ulnar collateral ligament, or UCL, helps hold these bones together, which gives the elbow its needed support and stability. The UCL is comprised of three bands, the anterior, posterior, and transverse bundles. Together, they connect from the humerus at the medial epicondyle to the ulna at the coronoid process, located on the inner side of the arm. An ulnar collateral ligament injury is damage to any one of these three bands. This refers to stretching or tearing of the ligament. This damage can happen gradually over time from repetitive actions like overhead throwing or due to a traumatic event like a dislocated elbow. A UCLI may give you no problems if the damage is minor, but that's pretty boring. Now, if we have a symptomatic patient, that person will feel inner elbow pain joint instability, and they will have problems with their overhead throwing. When throwing, they may experience a pain and a pop. That would be because your joint isn't held as tightly together as it was before the damage. Throwing in that fashion puts a lot of stress on the joints. And now that the inner side of the elbow is weakened, the outside of the elbow, which holds the lateral collateral ligament, will pull the joint to the opposite side of the arm more than it should, displacing the bones from making a sound joint. Those people at risk for UCLI are athletes and kids. Athletes that play sports like baseball and football are at a high risk due to the actions that are needed to play. A pitcher and quarterback will perform many overhead throws over the course of a game, and many games over the course of their entire career. On the other hand, kids are still growing and are susceptible to injury. A dislocation or early injury may be detrimental to the ligament's future growth. To find out if you have a UCLI, you'll need to see a physician, and during your visit, you'll be asked about any previous medical history and events or actions that might have contributed to your symptoms. This will give the doctor a good idea of what your condition is, but to test that the ligament is doing its job, they will do a valgus stress test of the elbow. Here, the doctor will feel the elbow and pull outwards to determine if there is any pain or laxativity of the ligament. That means that the joint will move further out more than it should. It is imperative to receive imaging tests to truly see the extent of this injury. The quickest method is by ultrasound. An ultrasound can reveal a tear or sprain of the tissue by sending out sound waves to give the density and the depth of the ligaments. A sprain ligament will show you a darker picture because there are not as many sound waves being reflected. A torn ligament will just show a big gap in the picture. A more advanced test is an MRI with arthrography. Here, contrast dye is injected and settles in the joints. This dye allows the joint to be seen easier than it would be without the dye. This gives a detailed image of the surrounding tissue and overall joint health. Once diagnosed with the UCLI, treatment plans will be discussed. If there isn't much pain or need to use the elbow, rest is your best option. If there is pain but damage is minimal, physical therapy will help stretch and work the ligaments and muscles without causing any future damage in an effort to help support and heal the tissue. A more invasive approach is a platelet-rich plasma injection. The blood's plasma is combined with growth and clouding factors found in the platelets. These platelets are crucial to the healing process, and by introducing more of those factors directly into the joint, the ligament's health will be restored as long as the injury isn't too severe. However, if the injury is too far gone from simple treatments, or if that elbow is frequently used for their job, surgery is your only option. Surgery can be approached two ways. In the docking method, a graft of the ligament from elsewhere in the body or from a cadaver is inserted into holes that were drilled into the humerus and ulna, and it is tied down to secure the graft to the correct position. 
If you would like to see this in action, I will post a video down in the description. And a quick warning to the squeamish, the video is of a real surgery, so if you don't like watching that stuff, don't. Moving on, the screw fixation method uses a graph as well, but instead of tying down the graph into holes, it is screwed directly into the bone. Although these are two different ways of doing the same thing, they can be combined into a hybrid, taking some steps from docking and some from screw fixation. If successful, the surgery should return you to your previous activity level. If not treated, complications may arise. Due to the pain that the person will experience, you will not be able to move as you once did. This is called a functional impairment. When the elbow is knocking around and doesn't have the support that it needs, intraarticular damage may occur, meaning that the elbow joint itself is now damaged instead of just a ligament. Before I wrap this video up, I have a bit of a fun fact for you. In 1974, the first person to undergo an ulnar collateral ligament reconstruction surgery was a baseball player. His name was Tommy John, and his surgery was successful. And ever since then, a UCLI was also known as a Tommy John injury. In conclusion, try not to hurt yourself when you're pitching balls to your son. That's all I have for ulnar collateral ligament injury. If you want to check out my previous video on degenerative disc disease, that'll be down in the description. And my next video will be on brain tumors. So, until next time, stay healthy and be safe.